The Lamas 3.2 3 billion barometer model is a small model capable of a very good performance. If you want to the chatbot arena, you will find it actually just behind the GPT 3.5 turbo. What is great about this model that it's just two gigabytes, it's support 128k context links, it's open source and it's easy to fine tune. In the artificial analysis page, you will find the summary of this model. It's, yeah, of course, a slower quality compared to the average model. It's just two gigabytes in terms of model, but in the price, it's the cheapest compared to the average model. In terms of speed, it's extremely fast. As you can see here, in terms of speed, it's just behind the Gemini 1.5 flash. This is the fastest model that we have as an open source. Also, this model has a lower latency. It means that it can receive the first token in a very short time. In the quality, there is the output and the price. It sit in this area. It's very low in terms of quality, but in terms of speed, it's extremely fast. You can find it available at Olama under the Lamas 3.2. You will find it with its little brother, 1 billion parameter, which is 1 giga and a half. And you can find it also at Hagen Face under the MetaLama family, but you have to ask for permission to gain access to it. So the easier way is to get it from Olama. Before we fine tune it or do anything, let's test it out, compare it to a GPT 3.5 Turbo model. This model, when it came out, everyone lost their mind because it was a very good moment at the time. So we're comparing an open source model that is two gigabytes to the 3.5 Turbo model from OpenAI. So first question will be natural language processing in mass. What is five to the power of eight minus six to the power of eight, double it and add two to the power of three. And let's see the speed. Okay, as you can see, it's blazing fast. Even the result is almost perfect. I will say there are tie over here. So the correct answer should be minus two, five, seven, seven, nine, seven, four. And GBT 3.5 got it correct and uh, i will say it's almost correct at the 3b the second question will test the capability of logic and reasoning with mass we have five crows on a branch three of them fly away two came back and three new crows joined how many crows are on a branch correct answer should be seven which as i can see here is there is a tie the result is here is seven and the result here is also seven so my second question will test the capability of translation. This text from Japanese to English. And trust me when I say this, the Lama model actually nailed it. As you can see here, this is the story about a young man who saved baby turtle. And I asked this question before actually in multiple video that I had while testing model. And note that it tell me the Japanese summary or a, a bridge version of a work. But GPT 3.5 gave me just the answer and doesn't explain anything. So far, this model is very good. Let's test it in something like text summarization. I asked it to summarize on a very long article about that change that will happen because the I for junior developers. And I made a video about it, it's called say goodbye to junior developer. But out of the gate, you can see that the three billion parameter summarization is very good compared to the GBT 3.5. This is fantastic because this model was created to work on mobiles and small devices. It means that you can build a local rag on top of it and it will work very good. So this question will test the capability of text generation. Here I ask it to write 20 sentences that end with the letter S. And it wrote it like almost perfect. The only sentence that got it wrong is over here. So this is 19 out of 20. I'm going to be honest here. GBT failed at the first sentence and the second sentence and the third. Forget it. Correct. And it failed until the seven and continue failing after that. And there is a few correct one here. So this model, the 3B, good at thickest generation and thickest summarization and also translation. This is a very good model so far. Before we move on from the test, I have to be honest, in term of mass, and logic and reasoning, the GPT 3.5 term was still better. 
I asked a few other questions like what is the number that rhyme with the word we use to describe a tall plant. Both of them got it correct. I got the number three. And I asked it another question. It's a little bit logic and uh, math. A normal bus is driving at 56 miles per hour. There is three people in the back row and two people in the second to last row. The minimum number of people on the bus should be six. GPT got it correct. The 3B lemma got it wrong. And here are these questions about if Linda and Bolt can be siblings. GPT got it correct, but the 3B from lemma got it wrong. So this model is created for summarization, text generation, and translation. If you start using it in math and logic and reasoning, it will start to show its bad side or lack of good training in this area. Before we fine tune anything that's check if you need actually need fine tuning or you just need a rag and you don't know yet. I wrote this while ago when I was fine tuning this LAMAS 3.1 8 billion parameter, which is an actually very good model also. Go in a quick summary, when to fine tune and when to use a rag. When to fine tune when it's in specifically used cases. Fine tune is very good when you make the model perform a certain tasks like sentiment analysis, translation, or custom text generation. Uh, when you have a ton of available labeled clean data, especially like it's relevant and high quality data. Customization, when you need the model to understand and generate domain specific terminology like being a medical or construction performance because the performance of fine tuning and the model itself is faster of course compared to rack privacy and security this is very important when your data is important and you don't want to share it in an external system for retrieval when to build a rank when the da data itself is dynamic it means that it change it's um, scaling with time like articles, real-time data, or evolving databases. When you have a very large knowledge bases, when you need to access like a large, very large knowledge bases that the model wasn't initially trained on, when it's open domain for Q&A, RAG is the king for Q&A apps. When you're low on resource, mean like Python is computationally expensive and uh, it requires you to fine tune a very good model but in this video i'm going to show you how you fine tune a model for free on the google collab t4 scalability when you need to system to scale with the growing amount of data that you have without training the model every few weeks so this is a very quick comparison i'm going to leave it under the video so you can go in and read it all right let's see how we're going to fine tune it using a library called Unslaws. Unslaws is a free library that's open source. These people behind it are genius in math. They rewrote part of libraries to make fine tuning of models, performs twice faster and use at least 50% less memory usage. I'm gonna explain everything inside this code so you will be aware of what we're doing and you can modify it later if you want to. We started off with installing Unslaws and every single library that need. We onboard Torch and Unslaws fast language model function to start. Here, this is the max sequence links. This control how long the input sequence can be. You can think of it as how many words or tokens a model can handle in one go. The longer it is, the more context the model gets. Here we have also the data type, which is set to none. It's automatically detect the best type for the hardware, but if you're having a specific GPU like Tesla or Ember, you can set it to things like float 16 or B float 16. Here load in four bytes, it's set for true. This is the key part. By setting this to true, we're using the four byte quantization to reduce the memory size of the model. This makes things faster and lighter it's perfect if you don't have massive amount of GPU memory. Like right now, we're using the T4. It's a free GPU from Google. But right now, we're going to select the model that we want. Here, this is a 4-byte model. You can select one of these. But we're using the Unslaws LAMAS 3.23 billion parameter instruct. And we set the stuff that we bought it over here. Before we go to the next step, let me explain what is LoRa and how it works so you can understand everything about this code. 
LoRa is a short word for low rank adaptation. It's a technique used in fine tuning large language models like the GBT or the Llama. Its primary goal to reduce the computational resource and memory required during the fine tuning itself, making it efficient and easy to access. I have this image that I stole from Medium. Usually, large language models have millions or billion parameters like this model. In standard fine tuning, you adjust all this parameter, which require a lot of memories. So you go in through 3 billion parameters model that is a lot and require a lot of computational power. LoRa, instead of adjusting every parameter, what it do in a very simple word, the pre-trained weight will freeze. It will not touch it. What will happen? It will add this new weight or the new update that will fine tune to the model and inject it inside the model without touching the old pre-weight training. So back to our code. Right now, I think you understand a little bit more about LoRa. Let's take a look to every one of these values. R here, control the rank of LoRa for fine tuning. You think of it like how much were you adapting the model? The common values are eight and 16 or 32, depending on how much capacity of you want to add. The higher number mean more model flexibility but it also require more memory. This part of the model, we're going to be fine tuned module like the Q and the K and the V and the O project are responsible for how attention work in the transformer models. By targeting them, the model will avoid touching the entire model, making it fine tuned much faster and lighter. The LoRa Alpha, this is the scaling factor that balance between the pre-trained model and the newly added information to the model. Here we have the LoRa dropout. This regularization technique that randomly drop parts of the model during training to prevent overfitting. LoRa is optimized without it. Bias is non distill model not to add any extra bias parameter, which is an optimization technique to make the model even faster and lighter. Use gradient checkpoints. Here we're adding unslots. This is a memory saving technique. Random state, here this will make sure that model training can be reproduced again. So every time we run this, we will get the same result exactly. The use RS LoRa, this actually stands for rank stabilized LoRa or RS LoRa. It keeps the fine tuning stable even if you add more ranks. We turn it off because this is not a big model, this is a small model, lofty Q which stand for LoRa quantization. It's allow you to quantize LoRa layers to reduce the memory usage even further. But for now, now for loading the chat template, we're using the same format from the Lama 3.1 format. He's using this in example, the dataset from the fine tome 100K. This dataset in ShareGPT style, but it converted to hug and face normal multi turn format like role and content instead of form from to value here we have the tokenizer is created this tokenizer will fetch the chat template that's already created from unslots the lms 3.1 and this function will apply the tokenization that we created over here on top of the data set that we have now this is the hardest and final part about explaining the whole fine tuning after this it's basically the video is easy this part about this Supervised training setup. It's ten, it's, it with or short SFTT trainer. Here we set all the training art argument like the model, the organizer, the data set, which field that we should look for, which a text, the max sequence links, which spot, which is we already set far above. The data number product that means the data will be processed using two cores, make it faster to load and format. If you have more cores, you can increase it over here. Back in force. If we set this to true, it could make the training process five times faster for short sequence by backing multiple short sequence together. But for now, we'll leave it as false. Of course, you can test and play with this. It will make your training five times faster. Remember this. Here, we set the batch training for two. It's a very small number because we don't have a lot of GPU. And the gradient will accumulate for four steps before updating the model. It helps us to simulate large batch size even when you're using a small batch. We have here the warm up steps five. This model slowly increases its learning rate 
in the first few steps, preventing from learning too fast, so it's not overfit. The max steps is the total number of training steps is limit 60, which keeps the process fast. For this example, you can increase it, of course. Learning rate is the speed at which the model learn at a common rate of fine tuning. We use the FB16, if supported, and we log out the steps each one. We're using the Adam W optimizer with the AB precision, which help reduce the memory usage. Weight decay, this is prevent the overfitting by slightly banalizing the larger weight during the training. And finally, the scheduler type is linear. We're using linear learning. And this is the seed to ensure the training process can be reproduced again. And the output will be in the output folder. And finally, we hit start the training. As you can see here, there is the steps of the 60 and it's done. After that, you will look to the inference. The inference with how you can talk to this model and how to use it and how to save it also. We have multiple options here. We have the inference from Onslaught chat template. It's give you what kind of message over here, role user content, continue Fibonacci sequence. It will answer you down there. There is also the text streamer that will, it's like will stream the data for you, but the response of it is better in terms of format. We have ability to save it in LoRa model. And if you want to load the LoRa adapter, we just created and saved. All you have to do is switch in this from false to true. And as you can see here, the LoRa model inside output, it will be load and you can use it easily here using the same way of Onslaught. And finally, saving it to the fload 16 for the FLM or the lama.cbb or the ggf. So that's it for this video. I don't want to make it any longer. So if you find this video, value your time and provide you with a good information inside it, give it a like and interact with it using a comment. It will signal for the algorithm of YouTube that it's a very good video and will push it more and will help my channel to grow faster. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you learned something new in this video. My name is Hussam Dean, or simply you can call me Sam and see you on the next video.